Hello and welcome to this video that takes you through the new transaction synchronization features introduced in the APS NZ Tax April 2020 release. Transaction synchronization is the process that takes TDS transactions, that is, transactions received from IRD via their transaction data services, or TDS, and merges them into the accountant's detailed transaction record for each taxpayer the accountant is responsible for. The syncing process is performed in two places within the software. The first is in the TDS service. This service runs 24-7 on one of your servers, waking up every 15 minutes and checking for any new transactions from IRD. It then executes the auto-synchronization process. The second place that transaction syncing can occur is from the tax application's ledger page. The syncing process comprises several individual steps, and whether or not each step is performed is controlled by practice level system settings. With the April 2020 release, the practice settings have been relabeled and placed together for better clarity. Before syncing transactions into your ledger, a check for unwanted TDS transactions is performed. Some transactions from IRD's legacy systems were duplicated by IRD during their migration to new systems. A check for duplicates is always performed, and if found, the duplicate transaction is discarded. Subsequent syncing steps are optional, and only performed if the system setting, as you can see on the right, has been set to true. Two settings control discarding of reversal transaction pairs. A reversal is a transaction that has a link to another transaction, and reverses the effect of the original transaction. Reversals of provisional and return assessments are treated separately from reversals affecting all other transactions. Matching, at its most basic, involves a TDS transaction for a client, tax type and tax year, matching an existing ledger transaction with the same amount and date. The equal value transactions setting, as highlighted, must be set true in order for any of the subsequent matching rules to be applied. Sometimes a transaction matches the amount of a ledger transaction recorded by the accounting practice, but has a date that differs by a few days. Two additional TDS match settings allow you to set the number of days difference between a TDS and an otherwise equivalent ledger transaction to allow it to still be matched. One of the day difference settings is specifically for payment transactions, while the other handles all the other transaction types. A new TDS match setting called Allow Assessment Variance allows a TDS assessment transaction to match an identified ledger instalment even when the amounts differ. When set true, any difference between the TDS transaction and ledger instalment results in a special assessment variance transaction being created. This ensures the TDS assessment amount matches the sum of the ledger instalment and the newly created variance transaction. The location within the ledger of the created variance transaction is controlled by TDS match setting Assessed Variance into Net Tax. If false, the variance is placed with the ledger instalment that was matched. If true, the variance is created into the net tax ledger account. After the matching steps have completed, insertion of new ledger transactions is considered. TDS payment transactions that fall within 14 days of the assessment due date and equal the assessment due amount will be inserted. Let's take a look now at the new features in the ledger page. When the status of the return for the chosen tax year is locked or beyond, the return's writ amount is now shown in the menu bar. A Sync TDS button is now visible on the menu bar if the user's Joe rights allow it. For this example, the green rows show all three provisional instalments were manually matched to their original TDS assessments. In the net tax account, variance transactions were created to ensure the TDS transaction amount matched with the differing due amounts on the first and third provisional instalments. 
In the Unfiled IID Transactions section, all of the IID transactions that require action are listed. Some of these transactions, as highlighted, are duplicates that need to be discarded. There are also several reversal pairs. The reversal transactions are highlighted, and above each is the transaction it reverses, with its exclamation rev visual cue. Each of the three provisional assessments has been reassessed. Highlighted are reversals of the original assessments that are currently matched, as seen in the green transaction rows. The original assessments need to be unmatched and their variances deleted and then discarded, along with their paired assessment reversals. So to summarise, the unfiled transactions highlighted should all be discarded, and the previously matched assessments unwound to their original state with their variances deleted. The page now shows the results of the Sync TDS action after the discard processes but before match or insert processes have run. The unfiled transactions list has shortened, with the identified duplicates and reversals moved to the discarded transactions section. To illustrate the enabled matching processes, two ledger transactions have been manually inserted. An unfiled TDS transfer transaction, dated 27th of August, has an amount match with a ledger transaction dated 26th August, a date difference of one day. The system setting, transactions up to days difference, has been set to 7, so this transaction falls within the days difference allowed for a match. An unfiled TDS payment transaction dated 23rd of April matches the amount on a ledger payment transaction that is dated 3rd of May, a 10 day difference. The system setting, payments up to days difference has now been edited to 14 days, so this transaction is still within the days difference allowance set for a payment transaction match. There are three unfiled TDS provisional reassessment transactions with dates that match the ledger provisional instalment due dates. The system TDS match setting allow assessment variance is set to true. So the highlighted reassessments will match to the ledger transactions and create variances as necessary when the TDS amount differs from the ledger due amount. The system TDS match setting assessed variance into net tax is set to true, meaning any variance transaction created will be inserted into the net tax account. There is also a TDS return assessment transaction. It is compared against the net tax refund accounts due amount transaction along with any other unmatched provisional instalments. If system TDS match setting allow assessment variance is set to false the sum of unmatched PROV and net due amounts must equal the TDS return assessment in order for auto matching to proceed. If system TDS match at setting allow assessment variance is set to true, matching will always occur. Any difference between the sum of unmatched PROV and net due amounts and the TDS return assessment will result in an assessment variance transaction. You can see the results of matching rules having been applied. The TDS debit transfer and payment were matched because their amounts matched and dates were within the specified date differences allowed for the ledger transactions. Each of the provisional instalments has also been matched. The three TDS reassessments were all zero. With variances permitted, matching required variance transactions for P1 and P3 to be created to bring the retained ledger instalment values in line with the TDS assessment amounts. The final matching step took the TDS return assessment and matched it to net tax accounts due amount. The provisional instalments were already matched, so did not need to be considered in the return assessment matching process. Variance allowance in this demonstration is set to true but with the TDS return assessment amount equaling the net tax due amount in this example. No variance creation was required. With matching completed, attention turns to TDS transactions that can be inserted into the ledger. At present, only payments within 14 days of the due date and that exactly offset the due amount are considered. 
In the example, the TDS payment transaction highlighted is dated one day prior to the first provisional instalment's due date, so is within the 14-day limit, and has an equal opposite signed value, thereby meeting the two insert criteria. The remaining unfiled TDS transactions did not meet any of the syncing criteria, so will need to be manually inserted into the ledger. With all syncing of ledger transactions finished, a final step is always performed – to check and update unapproved 901 details that may have been affected by the changes, as indicated by the grey text values in the ledger's 901 column. That completes this transaction synchronisation video. Thank you for watching.